And now the second related text. We have Vincent Van Gogh's Starry Night. Hope you enjoyed that special brief guest. Anyway, um, no, I can't stop laughing. So what we're going to look at today is the Vincent Van Gogh's Starry Night. So we're looking at a painting because, again, this does depict that idea of the distinctively visual. So what we know about this painting is that Vincent Van Gogh painted this based on his memory of what he saw and we can see in its creation and some of the ways that it has been painted and the layout that there's a certain element, the starry night, which is being emphasised and shown to be quite distinctive. So if you are not familiar with this painting, you can go online and have a look at it closer. I just happened to print out one that I found online just for the purposes of this video. But the first thing that I want to talk to you about, obviously, um, is the what it is a depiction of. So um, it is based on the fact that um, he painted this in 1889 while he was in St. Remy, and I don't think I pronounced that correctly, but that's R-E-M-Y, where he was seeking treatment in a mental asylum. But what we know is when he was painting this, that he painted it based on his memory. So it wasn't like he was there um, to see it. And it is based on a, a night sky he saw in Provence, which is an area in France. So it's actually one of his most famous. And so, and part of it is due to its distinctive qualities. So the first thing that you do notice is the overwhelming night sky. And that's the first element that I want to talk to you about because we, we have to look at this as the visual and we have to look at some of the technical elements. So if we look at the ratios and the layout, typically we see things in the foreground, middle ground, background. And what we can see is that these foreground images, which I'll talk about a bit more in a moment, are actually kind of completely um, kind of blended in and what's more captivating is the night sky and so that's the first image is that the background of the painting is actually the most dominant and prominent and it stands out okay so you can talk about the idea of salience and the prominence of the the night sky how it's taking over the second thing in terms of the night sky is just the way that it is painted and the movement so the brush strokes and the way that it is painting is bringing it to life so where we can compare that to Douglas Stewart is that he's taking this memory and turning it into a still painting, but creating movement within it through the way that it is painted. So the swirling and the brush strokes. So we're getting that sense of that it's alive in a sense. Okay. And so that's quite dynamic. So one of the ways that it's described in some of the art literature is that it is a dynamic painting in that it's able to be quite lifelike and movement, but in that abstract way. Um, so you can talk about the fluid brush strokes if we're going to look at, there's, at any technicalities. So the stars in the sky are quite intense um, and there's a whole lot of different colours merging together, um, but it's really what's brought about. Um, what we have here and just here is some cypress trees. Now these cypress trees, again, they blend in. They don't necessarily stand out. Of course, they're just like a shadow, but they're not really prominent. So they're kind of blending in as well. So that's what we see in the foreground. And then what we have whoops, down here at the bottom is we have the not a town. And so what we can see is it's up high looking down. Usually when we are in that situation of looking out on a overlooking a town in a night sky is that often the lights of the town take over the lights in the night sky. But here we see there's a contrast. So down at the bottom, and you will have to go and look at this image closely, but down in this bottom quarter of the image, we have a town and nothing is really standing out. So the um, it's quite uncharacteristic um, but what it does is it really um, gives us a sense that 
the image and the night sky is quite prominent. So you can look a little bit closer, but mainly you can talk about the ratios and the rule of thirds, the layout, the movement that is created to bring it to life that is quite dynamic and that it goes against a lot of the what we might consider views of a night sky. And again, it's taking something that people might look at um, in that's quite, you know, we see a night sky every night if we wanted to, but it's taking something that we take for granted and presenting it in a way that is much more interesting and distinctive. So um, that combined with William Street um, or Municipal Gum are good options in terms of having some kind of related text. So you can find a text of your own that has similar themes, but if you do, make sure you come and see me so we can discuss it further.